When exactly did Cobra become a cool brand? Let's take a look. Oh, how good is this? Didn't even know this came with it. That's when I thought, you know what, Cobra on something here. They're not just gonna go distance, distance, distance. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon here, a couple of unboxings. I've got Cobra Clubs, which I'm quite excited about. They're brand new, or some of them are brand new in this box. TaylorMade irons, a bit out there. A brand of irons, especially from TaylorMade, that um, you don't really think of, but they looked in great condition, and I've got quite a lot of them for a good price. I'll show you all the prices. Did a couple of giveaways this week. The Left Hand Wedge, the Game Golf, Terry, Paul, thank you for first of all subscribing, liking the channel. You both won that. I've actually replied to your comments, so just get me your email address and I'll send you all the details. Definitely want to do more giveaways. Thank you for all the support. I think that video got close to like 1,200 likes, which is astonishing, and 1,000 comments as well, which is really good. So thank you for everyone that's supporting the channel at the moment. So the topic of this video, when did Cobra actually become a cool brand? Because it struggled heavily when it was like King Cobra. If you didn't know, Cobra was owned by a Kushnet, which is basically Titleist. A Kushnet owns Titleist Footjoy and Cobra at the time. Puma bought Cobra, and since the last 10, I think it was 2010 or 2009, I can't quite remember, when it got bought over, and I think obviously Puma have done a great job turning it around, especially with the people they sponsor, people that are a bit out there, not necessarily traditional golfer, i.e. Ricky Fowler, Bryson, they've done well. So I've got some clubs in here. This is a Cobra box, we'll get into that one in a minute. I want to show you these tailor-made irons which I've got as well. I think I paid them. And this is the first time, oh he's done a fantastic job putting these in the box as well. Are these, oh wow, these look really good. These look fantastic. Tailor-made SLDR irons. No one really thinks of tailor-made SLDR irons, and if you've been watching the channel for a while, you'll know that pretty much all tailor-made irons are exactly the same. As long as they're cast, big-headed, forgiving, they're going to be quite similar to, well, the next version, or the upgraded version, or the downgraded version. I've got three to pitch and wedge, plus a wedge as well. So I've got a 56 degree wedge there. I'll get the price up. I believe I paid 170 for the lot which I thought was a fantastic, it, I mean it would have been an unreal amount of money, especially three weeks ago, four weeks ago, in the height of everyone buying golf clubs, like July, August, the amount of money the second hand clubs were going for was astonishing, but I still think it's a good deal where we're at the moment, and these looks in fantastic condition, as well as the shafts as well, like the decals on the shaft, it just makes important when everything of the golf club especially if you're buying second hand all of them are in good condition rather than like the grips are worn the decals are worn therefore you're gonna have to get them changed and you're just spending more money so you might have spend 150 pounds on a set of clubs but then you need to spend eight pounds on a grip per club which is exciting because that's gonna follow into the new video as I've got some grips turning up and we're gonna be doing that at home there you go no one really thinks of SLDRs to be honest, but they're as good as any other cavity back iron tailor made a bring out essentially. And I actually think they're one of the better looking ones. I wasn't a massive fan of the aesthetics of the SLDR itself, but the SLDR irons, I think they look quite tidy. That three iron, where's the three iron? That three iron, I think I might just sell it on itself. That is potentially, don't destroy them a great club for most people just to hit off the tee. Nice, big, chunky, basically a utility driving iron. Maybe not as big. Some people would probably want a bit more behind it. But again, that's a nice little club there. Interesting why it's got a red flex shaft though. It's the only thing that lets it down. Would I have a three iron in this in red flex? If you need red flex, potentially you need a hybrid or even bigger head. So that is a bit of a strange combination. But I thought for 170 pounds, all of those together, plus the wedge, I'm real deal. Right, let's put that with the pile of clubs that I've got building up in this flat. You can tell I've got a very patient wife. Again, 
Cobra, it's taken a while for them to change the perception. I do feel very much King Cobra as the brand, the model is very dated, very old. It's essentially what I feel Titleist got into, bringing out the same thing year on year by expecting the consumer to keep on buying it, which just didn't really happen. Now, potentially gimmicky over the last five years with the brand you'll see in the box here, but I think they keep on trying to look outside the box. We're talking Arcos in the grips, we're talking one length irons, just trying to do something a bit different. I'm delaying because I have no idea how to get into this box. Okay, bear with me one minute. We're in. We are in. Now there's some stuff in here that's basically brand new. 300 pounds I paid for this box. Still got the wrapper on the grip there. Cobra Amp Cell. But essentially that is a brand new club and in a shop, I mean, I'm not too sure what they would have retailed at, but any adjustable three wood's gonna be 120 plus, realistically. This obviously with a wrapper on. Again, lovely little purchase. And I quite like it in gray. For me personally, it just seems more traditional. And now I've got some other brand new stuff in here as well. I thought 300 pounds, it was just a really good deal. There we are, Cobra Amps out. I love it in the silver. Now you could get these, I think, in different colors as well. Like orange, red, green, blue, again, for me. And in terms of reselling, I think the silver just works well and nicely. But that's a brand new club right there with brand new grips. I'm going to get these all out. I'll try and show you exactly what we've got in terms of makeup. I think I've also got a putter in here as well. I think I've got another wedge. So let me get it all out and then we can have a good look. Right, we are done. Let's have a look. Now, some of these have obviously been uh, actually used. I'm not too quite sure why you bubble wrap the head cover, but I like it. It's all about being extra careful and cautious. These are in fantastic condition. Now this has obviously been used. Okay, there's a slight mark on the top there. Overall, again, that's actually really good looking in terms of condition. Really happy with that. A nice traditional putter. I think this is very much, again, I don't think Cobra, Cobra don't make putters anymore, do they? So this is definitely a bit more dated, a bit more out there. Not too sure on the age of this. Again, you're talking like 15 to 20 pounds plus postage at best. But it's a putter with a grip and a shaft and if you're starting this game just getting a putter practicing your putting is more important than the putter itself nice little phaser wedge here as well it's like the gift that keeps on giving phaser is very much your more lower end type of wedge that being said it doesn't really matter it's in good condition again like if i can get 25 pounds for that then that's good but it's just in great condition. It actually looks really good as well. Quite like the bounce on that, especially for a 60 degree. Oh, how good is this? Didn't even know this came with it. Cleveland, very underrated brand when it comes to wedges at the moment. And that is in fantastic condition as well. That is absolute bonus. Look at these bad boys. I love it. Brand new clubs. I haven't had brand new clubs in this house for a very long time, especially with the wrapper still on. Something about brand new clubs, regardless of how old they are, they still always look fantastic. And I do feel this was the turning point for Cobra as the brand. Potentially the F F8 for me probably was a turning point. F8 when they came out with the milled face and the Arcos system and that was the same time as the more one length stuff was coming out. That's when I thought, you know what, Cobra on something here. They're not just going to go distance, distance, distance. They're going, actually, we've reached distance now. Like we all know, what other value can we get? Personalization, different colors, different ways of looking at the game in terms of technology so then you can now measure your stats whilst out on the course these are the kind of things i like about cobra as a company and they're one of the cheapest compared to the big brands and they are in the big leagues i'm not talking about ben ross again or like the other manufacturers the lower end i'm talking the big guys they're the cheapest but also they're thinking about outside the box as well which is quite 
that's why I quite like them as a brand. So guys, there you have it. Thank you to everyone that entered the giveaway this week. Definitely want to do more giveaways. Let me know what you thought on this nice little bundle and that bundle and all the bundles that we're doing. Leave me suggestions on video ideas. Definitely want to do what's in your bags. Definitely want to do more stuff like this whilst we're at home and then obviously, fingers crossed, three weeks we'll be out and I'll be able to not only buy these, show these, but go and hit them as well. Make sure to leave this video a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys there.